Just kicking straight into it, uh, welcome to this session. It's uh, we're calling it Speech Analytics Made Easy. And in this particular session, for those who have uh, knowledge about uh, Corby, um, we'll be focusing a lot on some of the really exciting new features on Corby. But uh, in the kickoff stage, I'm going to ask Corey just now in a few moments, uh, just to give us a high level overview of who Cor or Corby is, where we come from, the pedigree, etc. So just kicking off um, the guest today, uh, Corey. Uh, well, let's do ladies first. Henriette Potkita. Henriette comes with, to us and, and she is uh, the customer success executive for Corby, also responsible for training and enablement. And uh, Henriette has, uh, what, over 25 years in call centers, contact centers, and is one of the very few certified COPC lead consultants in South Africa. So when uh, Henriette engages with customers from an operational point of view, as she sees it through the eyes of an optimization consultant. So I'm very fortunate to have Henriette on our team. Corey, um, not quite as many years in the industry as I have, but uh, going on, what, 20 years in data, data analytics. And in particular, Corey brings uh, many years of experience in speech analytics, having worked with uh, many of the big international brands. So Corey's our lead man. Uh, my role as brand ambassador, I've been in contact centers for, it'll date me, 45 years or so now. And uh, the three of us work together uh, to bring Corby to the market. And we've had a phenomenal couple of years. Uh, we're coming up for our 75th customer in South Africa, which we're very proud of. That said, I'm going to ask Corey to come in now. Uh, Corey, um, the opening question here, and it will be your segue into introducing Corby very briefly. Um, speech analytics in South Africa. So big question is, what is it that has made Corby so successful in a little over two years in South Africa? Over to you, Corey. Um, firstly, from my side, Rod, good morning. Good morning to all the attendees. It's a great pleasure as always. Um, I see some names I recognize this. So hi, all. Key successes, Rod, you know, I think firstly being proudly South African makes a big difference because we understand the South African market and being able to respond to it. But it typically boils down to three absolute truths as to why we've done so well. And out of interest, we're currently around 75 customers which means from a market penetration perspective, we're about four times the size of all of the other competitors combined in the market space. So differentiators being priced correctly for the South African market, obviously being based in South Africa, our cost base is RAND driven. So we are typically a fifth to a 10th of the American products. Um, and for us, it was the belief that speech analytics should be essential to every contact center, regardless of size. And when we designed the pricing model, it was, suitable for contact centers from five agents to 5,000 agents, and hence the affordability model that came into play. The second reason why we've been so successful is we built our own transcription engine. So it is built for South African English, Afrikaans, Zulu, and Sutu. The ability to support the vernacular languages is absolutely unique to us. But more importantly, things like being able to transcribe mixed language calls, which is a global unique um, differentiator for Corby has never been seen in the market before. And the last one, which will lead me into the overview of Corby, is around um, our ease of use, which we'll see in the presentation and how we are going to be doing it. But Rod, I've got a couple of slides just to chat around who we are rather than our differentiator. So just shout if you want me to bring those in for you. Please, Corey, take it away. Fantastic. I'm going to stop my video. Uh, for audio, I'm going to share my screen. Just confirm you can see my presentation. Sure. So for those of you on the call who've seen the presentation, apologies, but there's a number of new people who know nothing about who we are as Corby. So this is four slides to position who we are as an organization. First one, Corby is part of the Alpha Wave group of companies. As a group, we've been around for 25 years. We're over 320 people strong. As Corby, we are absolutely the dominant market leader in the South African space. We've done this over and over again. We've proved the technology. We are part of a reputable group that is longstanding with a successful track record of bringing technology to market. But more importantly, as Corby, 75 plus customers, an enormous success story and track record. 
Some of our clients, a lot of them are in financial services, um, which is well suited to speech analytics for two reasons. One, the onerous regulatory requirements and checks that need to be done. But secondly, also speaks volume about our security model. Uh, we're obsessed with security, things like encryption with data at rest and in transit is absolutely there. We do penetration testing and there's an entire information pack dedicated to security. But it's not just about, bar, about customers, it's also how do we support those clients. We have a very active partner ecosystem. So where appropriate, we partner with the correct partner for each client to ensure that the integration and automation of the call recording and download and upload processes are seamless. These are some of our partners and a lot of them are the blue chip partners in South Africa. And then just, Rod, we touched on it and it's not the focus of the presentation, it's around how, you know, what are the new features, but speech analytics is there to do four things for clients and preferably all four things. It's there to help them save money help them generate more revenue if they're revenue generating, improve the customer, but for me, more importantly, the agent experience, and obviously compliance. The question I often get is, can we do automated QA? Absolutely, but automated QA is not a standalone use case. It either forms part of automating 100% of the calls as a cost-saving mechanism or as a compliance-saving mechanism, but it's not the be-all and end-all, it's just to automate your quality scorecards, it is there to also provide business benefit and value to the other areas within the business. Last slide, how do we work? Um, just a couple of sort of observations. Time to value for clients is typically 30 to 60 days to see a return on the investment because of the price point. But more importantly, time to implementation is between five and 10 working days typically rapid deployment and the reason for it is we don't actually touch the telephony system at all there's no integration required as long as the client has the ability to extract their call recordings and drop that on a local folder on their network that is all the integration that is required we have a utility you can automate to upload those call recordings all of the calls that are uploaded are transcribed as mentioned we support four south african vernacular languages sa english Afrikaans, Zulu, and Sutu. It is on top of the transcripts that the queries are run. You visualize those in the dashboards that added you can't manage you can't monitor. That is what the dashboards are there for. And to also provide insights. And it's on those insights that you take action. Um, and then it's effectively a closed loop system. Now I can see tomorrow the impact of the actions I took today and how it changes the agent behavior and the behavior patterns I'm monitoring within the contact center. Uh, that's great. Uh, Corey, thanks for that uh, little intro there. I'm going to pick up on it, you know, the, the uh, slogan for called the speech analytics made easy. And I think that's been your uh, inputs and your guidance uh, as a specialist uh, over the last three years in developing uh, Corby to uh, take it to market is ease of use. Um, could you just speak to ease of use compared to any of the other applications or similar solutions that you have worked with in the past? Rod, rather than speak to, let me rather show, and I'm going to share my screen. You know, that the proof of the pudding is in, in the tasting, so I'm going to show a little bit of it. So, you know, you touched on it before. I've been in speech analytics now for roughly about 12 years. And the frustration is, and it's a general frustration with analytical tools, is they're trying to design these things for a very exclusive audience, i.e. your data scientists, or in the case of speech analytics, your voice analysts. And as Colby, we wanted to break that paradigm. We wanted to and have designed Colby that is fit for purpose for the contact center professional. It is your team leads, your quality assessors, as well as your um, contact center managers who's got to drive the solution and who's got to be able to build their own query. So with that, I want to show a couple of things. Um, I'm just going to hold into the query engine the queries are normally where it, it's it's difficult everyone thinks to write the query you've got to do sql scripting um, and the rest so what we've done when we designed the corby interface was we wanted our query interface to be conversational and be built the way we speak so you know i'm looking at a politeness query so are any of these words present you can say is the word please was it or was it said by anyone by the agent by the client and then we have some filters, close proximity means if there's more than one word, like may, you, are they within five words of each other, distant nine or exact next to each other? And then you have and more operators. So there's no fancy scripting required. It is merely inserting the phrases you want to, 
who was it said by, was it said by, and then taking it from there. Um, so that is the first part of making the interface easy is the query engine has always been the heart of the speech analytic solution. And we focus a lot of time to ensure that it is done easily so that it's your QAs and your team leads can do it. The second area just to show is around our dashboards. Um, again, BI tools are renownedly complex. Dashboarding, dashboarding for us was to be as simple as adding a card, selecting the card name, let's just say this is our demo card, and then choosing the visualization. I'm gonna just pick a call list, and then saying, how do I wanna group it? I wanna group it by agent and the like, and then going to create it. There is no fanciness about it. It's done to be as simple, intuitive, and easy as can be, so that your contact center staff can drive the tool and not rely on any sort of specialized skills to drive it from there. Thank you, Corey, on that one. I'm going to ask Henriette to come in now. Uh, Henriette is the Corby Customer Success Executive. And uh, Henriette, your role, if I'm correct in this, is to work with customers from the day of onboarding uh, through the first phase of training. And then to me, the most exciting thing is um, how you are optimizing customers. Just as a, an observation for those uh, present on the call, what we have seen is a small uh, pilot exercises, 10, 20, 30 agents, um, but very quickly after the training where customers start seeing value, true value, uh, and, and the insights coming through and having a positive impact on the operation is we start seeing ramp ups. And so we've had ramp ups from 20, 30 agents in a pilot, uh, to our largest single user is um, pushing what 1500 at the moment. So, uh, Henrietta, why don't you just take us through how you work with customers once you've been through the training and into optimization? And I think also in your session now, if you could look at um, and highlight just some of the key points of some of the newer features that uh, Corby is uh, proud to introduce. Um, so, over to you, Henrietta. Perfect stuff. Thanks, Rod. Morning, everybody. Yes, so, so far, you're right. I've been involved with all of our customers, getting them up to speed, getting them to see the value, the value realization. For us, it's very important, and Corey has mentioned it, because we're making speech analytics easy. We've also realized that it's not just about making it easy, but it's also about ensuring that there is value or value creation or valuable insights coming forth from that. Just the journey and what I do, so... Typically, what I do with any new onboarding or any new customer, I will understand, send them a use case, understand what it is that they want to use call before. What are the typical kinds of insights? What is the environment? I then walk the journey with them, taking them through training, making sure that whoever their call be administrator is, is proficient and able to use the system. It's very important that they see and they understand and they are able to run with it on their own. Don't stop there. So we do the three hours training, but afterwards we have continuous check-ins. I do weekly check-ins where necessary. I do email check-ins, making sure where we need to, we jump in, we assist. A key thing, and one of the things we've mentioned with this journey as we've gone along, and that's actually where it's gonna come in where I'm gonna show some of the features that we've rolled out that I'm quite excited about. But we've realized some of the challenges we've seen because we've now made speech analytics easy. We've opened up a market where previously roles or persons who would not have dealt with speech analytics now need to start dealing with it and they start getting proficient in it. But in actual fact, it's a whole new technology. It's a whole new world. Organizations who previously never even worked with speech analytics are now dabbling and starting to, to work and see what speech analytics can do. Challenges with that comes with what do we do now? Now we've got these insights. What do we do with it? Who's supposed to do something? What happens to our normal QA? How do we replace this? So it's a whole new way of working. And together with that, there's a change management factor and a bit of a mindset yeah. shift that needs to happen when you bring in speech analytics. So what we've done and what we've realized is together with the ease, and I've mentioned it, we need to also start considering and thinking about the value. What we've said for this year, it's all about customer success. We are focused, Colby will be successful. We will be successful if our customers are successful. And we had a long strategy and we spoke about it and what is success? What is success for our customers? 
Success for our customers would mean if they are seeing improvement in their business performance. Straight up easy as that. There's various things and I'm gonna talk through some of the use cases, but we specifically focused and said, we then need to do everything we can to help realize that business value for our customers. So outside of making it easy, how can we help them that they use the tool effectively to help them ensure success? So right with that, I'm going to jump in. I want to share my screen just to share one of the big features we've implemented. Um, are there any questions up until now? Or are you comfortable that I go into sharing that screen? We don't have any questions or chats that open at the moment. So go ahead, Henry. Thank you. Perfect stuff. Thanks. Brilliant. So what you can see in front of you is a big thing that we've implemented that we call our Success Advisor Health Check Dashboard. In essence, any of your administrators, an admin user, a Colby champion, the person who's responsible for your speech solution environment. When you log in, this is the screen that you will see. What it is, is this is a check that checks across various aspects of your speech analytics solution. So it's not just looking at how do you build the query, but it looks at anything that could potentially influence the outcome or the success of the speech analytics solution that you are implementing. I'm quickly just gonna chat you through some of them, but what the aim of this is, is to give you a one page view when you log in, if there's anything you need to be aware of, that you need to action or need to do something on to ensure the best success out of your solution. So on here, quickly gonna chat through the typical things that gets checked. We check from upload stage. So we've looked at everything and it starts with your uploads. Do you have uploads that are recent? Did you do uploads in the past two days? As part of those uploads, were there any failed recordings? Because you do need to be aware, maybe if you're looking for a recording, it failed to upload and process, you need to be aware of that. We look at the number of agents. Do you have recent agents for the month? Because you do want to make sure that when you report on your insights, it's based off recent calls, recent agents. We look at your queries, the number of queries you have, but also the accuracy of those queries. When we train, there's a full process where we do recommended benchmark. How do you refine your query and how do you ensure accuracy? This check will go see if there are any queries needing attention to bring it within that benchmark of recommended accuracy. We look at your dashboards and your visualizations and how many do you have? Are you actually visualizing your results? We look at billing and I will spend some more time on this where you can set an agent quota for the number of agents that should be loaded. And lastly, we also look at your users or anybody who has access to Colby and whether they have logged on in the past week. So the whole idea with this is we're taking it away just from query building, but we're looking at the solution as a whole. Anything that influence and anything that will help you get operationalization and speed to market. Dependent on the checks and anything that is found, you will then see either certain things flagged as critical or as a warning or as healthy. Now the critical is anything that could very likely be influencing the successful outcome of the insights or what you are aiming to get out of Colby. Your warnings would be anything that you need to be aware of and then all your healthy switches, all your smooth runnings. Now, all of the findings are listed underneath, starting obviously from critical into warning into healthy, but it's as easy as clicking and you will see more information. With any of the findings as well, you will then have the finding, for instance, here, query accuracy. You will see exact details. From your success advisor, you can navigate to the specific areas that require attention and there's also recommended actions for what you need to do in order to move that critical flag into a healthy flag. From within the Success Advisor also, what we're busy working on is incorporating a video library. So for instance, with query accuracy, if you find the flag and you realize some of your queries are not within the recommended benchmark, 
but you're a bit lost and you you need a refresher and you need to see, but what does it mean? And what is the accuracy benchmark and how do I get there? We are incorporating the click here for help and we will do this throughout, where if you then click, it will take you straight into a very short, quick video. Here, for instance, is a less than 20 minute video that you can then watch through and practice the principles to then bring the critical flag back into a healthy. So that's just the success advisor. The aim obviously is to work on the criticals, try and move them into a warning and ultimately into a healthy. Because if you've worked on those, you will know that the success and the outcome of the insight will be what you are expecting and you are able to use it. Okay. Henry, quickly, before you go yes, to the right. next section, yes. if I can just jump in here. Um, Perfect. The success advisor, I think, is one of the most powerful features that we've added fairly recently. Um, just a bit of background to that, where some of that came from is working with various clients uh, where we see phenomenal up uplifts in first call resolution, uh, identifying and alleviating silent calls, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but so many of the customers didn't really have the, the means of quantifying their goals. Why we're we going to deploy speech analytics, what do we want to achieve. And I think, Henriette, that's the work that you did um, on the uh, part of the success advisor, the strategic goals. Um, I think that's your introduction into your strategic goals um, component. So take it away. It's yours. Perfect stuff. Thanks, Rod. I am so what, and thanks, Rod, for taking me there on that. So definitely, and what we've realized is we need to also link. So it's good to have the insight. It's good to now have all of this, but what do I do with it? And we've realized where a lot of times the challenge comes in is how do I link what Colby does and I link speech analytics and the power of speech analytics to an actual business strategic goal. What does that look like and what does that mean? So I'm going to share just, it's currently in an, a, a PDF format. We are busy currently working on incorporating it within the success advisor where it will be as part of the actual user interface. But what we've worked on is saying, now that you've got access and I'm just gonna kill my video just for full sharing purposes. But now that you've got access to the world of speech analytics, what do I do with it? What does it mean? And how do I know if it is successful? It's all good and well to say I've got queries running, I've got dashboards and I'm looking at insights, but what does it mean for the business? And this is the piece of work that is that we currently know that we're starting to share, taking our customers on that journey. And ultimately what it is, is to say, we've got four overlying or head main goals as a business. And it speaks back to the, the slide that Corey shared with the different use cases for, for Corby or for speech analytics. Main goal, are you looking for direct cost saving? Or secondly, are you looking for efficiency gains through automated QA? And we will go through into the details. Or maybe for you, it's all about sales, revenue generation, I wanna increase my sales. Or in a collections environment, I want to increase my PTPs or my actual amount collected. Or are you looking at customer and agent experience and lastly, compliance or quality? So what we've realized, because the world is so big with speech analytics, the best way to implement is not to try and implement the full picture in one go. To make it successful, start by identifying one head key goal. So the first key important thing for you is it direct cost saving. Or is it QA or is it agent experience, customer experience? Once you've done that, what we've looked at is then to see and break it down to give various suggested goals or things you can do using Colby that will impact and help you achieve that goal. For instance, and I'm just going to pick out a few, for direct cost saving, things you can do is reduce your average dead air time, silent time. Remember that silent time talks to resourcing and it talks to custom experience. But if you are able to reduce your dead air time on your calls, it will break out into efficiency gains, either less agents or more calls being taken, which will impact your direct cost saving. Under this, we are also then suggesting some example action plans, breaking it down into the details of how does it tie into and here we say using Colby, what do you do to reduce your average silent time? You start by identifying outliers. Colby's got it available. The information is in there. You draw up your card. 
you investigate using those goals, you implement action, measure impact and repeat. So in this way, we've broken this down into various things. And part again of this journey is to hold our customers hand and to say, which pick one or two that you feel will be most effective. And those are the first ones that we implement. Um, For and instance, if I can yes. just jump in here just to elaborate a little bit further. Um, yes. Available sometime towards the end of April is a much expanded handbook, uh, which will also be incorporated into the application itself. Uh, when each of these examples, um, it's fleshed out into why, why do, why uh, pick one of these goals, how to do it, how to set up the queries, how to measure the queries, how to uh, create the dashboard. So it really is a hand-holding exercise, expanding on all of these, because literally every one of these uh, flags that we've seen here, goals, has a financial implication somewhere. And as we all know, the boardroom wants to hear one thing, and that's revenue, bottom line, ka -ching. Back to you, Henriette. That's definitely, thank you, Rod. And that's again talking about because we've made it easy, we are now bringing the boardroom talk into the role of the QA and the Colby administrator to connect those dots. It's giving the full picture so that everybody's on the same page. Everybody knows what the ultimate goal is, but then they know how to do it within Colby. I want to use this then and I'm going to share just some examples. And then I want to take you back into some of the other features within Colby. But let's look, for instance, when we look at, let's say you decide for now your main aim is to improve your customer experience. You are worried about customer experience. It's all about your customer. Like for us this year, it's all about the customer. You can then go look at the main goals that we suggest. And let's say you then decide that I want to improve my call resolution. I've seen that there's a cost impact, but my customers are also complaining. Example action plan says, implement some queries to identify repeat calls but we then give you some examples. Check where the client says there needs to be a callback or the client indicates there were previous contact attempts, there's dropped calls, bad phone line connection. Now, this is where I wanna just take you back into Colby. So it's all good and well to say, perfect, go implement a query. What we've done in Colby, and I just wanna share my Colby screen again for you, is that we have now gone one step further. And once again, something I'm very excited about, because I think this is just definitely a game changer in my mind, is when you now write queries, we are creating a query library. So it's not just that you need to start from scratch and you need to think, how do I write the query? We are expanding this library as we go along. I've got in excess of 500 queries that we will be adding as we refine and add along the way. But already in here, the queries that you see in your action plan when you now click add query, you can go select from pre-populated or templates of queries. For instance, customer experience. We've identified, I want to look at customer experience. You can now select from a drop down of pre-populated or written generic queries. We've said, for instance, we want to identify where the customer says or where there's a need for a callback. You can click, you can create, your, your query will auto-populate. So again, next steps and which is what we train, all you need to do now is work through your results, refine your query to bring it within accuracy, but already including those various vernac where it was available is available in your query. I wanna show a quick one because we always get the question, can you do sentiment or can you identify sentiment? Remember with Colby, it's based on words, verbal expression. There's a pre-populated query. I want to see customer experience. I want to go see wherever there is high risk with potential negative sentiment. You can pre-create. Remember, this is available for any Colby administrator. It already populates all those phrases, those expressions of potential negative sentiment. All you do is you run through your results. I just want to update my date for my demo calls. Through all of your calls, you're sifting through thousands of calls a day. It will give you just one list with maybe eight, nine, 10 calls that someone can click. It will take them to that spot and they can then decide what they need to do and how they need to take action.
So that was just looking at some of the nifty features is having the query library. We've got, for instance, outbound generic. If you want to look in an outbound environment, did the agent schedule a callback where required? Did the agent do the generic outbound greeting? Introducing who they are, introducing where they're phoning from, and if it's outsourced, who are they phoning on behalf of? So that's why I'm going to take a pause first, Rod, and hand back to you, because I will get excited and talk the whole day. Um, there's so many new features, but definitely the query library giving you ease of use with already queries there. You just need to refine them. Great stuff. Thanks for that, Henriette. Uh, Corey, can you come back in again with your video, please? Thank you. Uh, Corey, won't you expand on Corby's um, improved language models, particularly over the last uh, year or so, um, on the accuracy of transcriptions, the factors that influence accuracy of transcriptions, and then the accuracy of the analytics coming through from there. Uh, Corey, over to you. Um, great, interesting. That's a great question, an interesting one as well. But maybe to take a step back and chat around the trans global transcription benchmarks and then take it into the context of Corby. So globally, the accepted benchmark for transcription accuracy, in other words, taking audio and transcribing into text is 70%. And most of the American vendors in their home territories tend to have that type of accuracy. From a Colby, and there's a number of factors that influence how well audio gets transcribed. It's the, the compression rate of the audio, how noisy the environment is, how well the agent pronounces their words, the quality of the microphone and the headset. From a Colby perspective, the benchmark wasn't good enough for us. We wanted to beat that. So typically we are seeing with the clients we have between 75 and 90% accuracy rates on the transcription, which is an incredibly high percentage compared to what the accepted benchmark is. And in part, the reason for it is twofold. One, we built our own transcription engine specifically for the South African um, market. Things like mixed language transcriptions, which is an absolutely unique capability. So if a speaker switches languages mid-conversation, we dynamically transcribe the switch as well. So a call could start off in English, switch to Zulu, go back into English, <clears throat> switch to... Um, Zulu, again, we will transcribe it in that way. And the second one is we are continuously, and as Andrea touched on it, we are continuously working with each one of our clients to, one, enhance our roadmap based on the requirements they um, indicate would be useful for them. But more importantly, we work with them to enhance our language back in typically every sort of four to six months. With their permission, we harvest call recordings and we retrain our language models and get better and stronger language models. And hence why we can get up to 90% in certain instances. And that's been our formula for success in the South African market is that continuous training because accents differ. You know, our uh, sample call sets typically come from um, the Durban region, the Cape Town region, and obviously the Johannesburg region where the contact centers are. But we've got clients, for instance, in George with a big contact center. And there we are harvesting calls with their permission as well to then learn that accent and dialogue that is slightly different to the rest of the country and that benefits all of our clients. So it's a continuous and it will be a continuous work in progress for us to see how do we make it better and better all the time. Excellent. Thanks on that one, uh, Corey. Uh, we've had an interesting question, John uh, Poulton. Thanks for that one, John. Uh, Henriette, can you come back in again, uh, please, Corey, kill your video. Henriette, will you please show... Uh, the delegates, how we use automated QA and particularly the QA scorecards, which has been a really, really exciting feature to use, I think, by most of our customers. Henriette? Definitely. Thanks, Rod. And John, very good question. And if you think about those, those overlying use cases and value creation we've shown, one of the big things in Colby that could be one of your strategic goals is to have efficiency gains by means of automated QA or allowing your QA assessor to spend more time listening to more valuable things instead of spending time listening to every single call to check every single box where Colby can do that. So I will show you and let me share my screen again. In Colby, let me just stop my video. 
how it works and just how it all fits together. So you will have your calls which are transcribed and then you can build queries on top of those transcripts. A query basically is just looking for the presence of certain words or phrases, but then you can also use it to identify calls where the words or phrases are not present. So bringing it back into the QA, if you want to use it for auto QA, typically what you will do, what you see in front of you are some examples of QA type queries. I'm using this where, for instance, you want to check, did the agent advise that we are an authorized financial services and registered credit provider? Or did they ask for consent for credit vetting? So you can see these are some compliance QA type. You can also build queries for soft skills. Auto QA was the agent professional and polite, et cetera. So you will build all your queries based on all those checks you would have done when you listened to assess the call, anywhere where there's an expression or absence of words. Once you've done the queries and you've gone through your accuracy, in our dashboard section, we have the ability to pull everything together in a scorecard. Now in this scorecard, you can then also group calls together. Let's say for instance, that the agent concluded a sale to a customer, but he concluded that sale across three or four calls. Obviously the agent won't run through every single check on every single call. So you also have the ability to go on that level to say, I want to score the full transaction and group the calls together. But what you see is then an example of such a scorecard where we can see and you can group your results on any of your metadata levels. So if you're interested to see the result per team, per book, per campaign, per agent, you can do it in that way. But here you'll now see this is grouped by agent. To the right, we can see every single query. For instance, call opening, we've got was the call recorded statement read, et cetera. And underneath it, you will see a percentage. That percentage is the number of calls where the query was matched, which bringing it back into your QA speak is your calls that passed the monitoring. You can also set a weighting for each of these checks. And then based on that weighting, you will calculate an overall percentage QA score. So yes, you can get automated QA scores. You can sort this. When you click on this, it will take you to the actual calls. So that's how your QA can drill down to listen to specific spots or specific spaces or places where the calls are failing. You can also download these scorecards. So straight from the interface on the three dots, if you download, you get it available in CSV format that you can use in, in Excel or also via the API. Anything you see here is available via API if you want to use it in any of your systems. And that's your auto QA. Um, right, great stuff. Um, that question came from uh, John Poulton. Um, John, um, are you there? I'd like to get you live if I may. Uh, just to come in and tell us uh, what you asked that particular question and you also asked the export question. So, John, are you there? Can you join us? Yeah, you should be there. Um, I'm just oh, there, you go. Oh, there you go. John, over to you. <laughs> um, does that answer your question? And do you have any other questions? Because I know this is uh, something quite close to your heart. No, well, as you know, I've got that agent performance reporting tool um, and I get asked by lots of clients if I can link directly into, instead of them exporting QA scores and copying and pasting and then I import them into my SQL form. Um, it's quite nice to actually just have a SQL query that runs and just goes and fetches them. Or Henriette just mentioned an API, which is uh, equally um interesting to do the same yeah. things. You can just do an API call and just go and fix the QA scores and update it. It just saves an admin person having to run a report and then copy and paste and import it. So, no, I think that, that final output is always very interesting. And those are the three things that we normally look for is um, number of calls assessed, average score achieved, and any critical calls that would um, lead to a disciplinary or a warning or something like that where something was really bad with the client. But Excellent. 
I, I love this product. I think it's fantastic to have a South African product with all the languages. I didn't actually realize you could switch calls between, I mean, switch languages mid call and still yeah. transcribe it. It's just a very powerful right. feature. Actually, John, thanks so much for coming in on this. Uh, can I put you back to mute there? Sure. We'll just finish the, the session. So thanks, John. Um, right. Then I think it's uh, back to uh, Corey. Um, the insights, I think it's one of your pet hobbies, is, is turning insights into value and realizing value from, from using uh, Corby, so my videos off there for a second. So, uh, Corey, why don't you just pick up on how you are seeing customers uh, utilizing those insights, and, and perhaps you can mention some of the uh, case studies and the uplifts that we've been seeing over the last six months or a year. Over to you, Corey. Interesting, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Rod. Um, so, there's a couple of opening statements I want to make around insights and speech analytics in general. Is Obviously, the sky is the limit when it comes to queries and anything and everything that you can track around what is said, how frequently, what time of the day, and so on and so forth. Um, but the biggest benefit of the insight is the ability to track and trend behaviors over time. So remember, if I want to see which agents are displaying the correct behavior, whether it's following the sales process or the diagnostic process, I want to see how frequently do they do that. If I have an intervention, does that intervention stick? And does the, the behavior improve and remain at the level that is acceptable to us? So that monitoring over time is absolutely, to me, the key benefit of speech analytics in terms of providing insight. You know, often we have these coaching things, we do these random samples, and we never get a feeling for, is it perverse? Is it just a one-off? Or is it something that's very prevalent? So that is the first area where speech analytics gives you that 100% coverage across every call for every agent being analyzed to be able to see what is the correct, accurate picture and it's quantifiable. The second part around insights is that you've got to be able to action it. Henriette touched on it earlier on with what she said as well as, you know, interesting without action is absolutely a waste of time. And it boils down to business priorities. So let's say as a collection company, you want to improve your right party contact, your RPC rate, what are the things the agents have to do to then ensure that your RPC rate lifts, whether that is following the best practice process and being able to track and monitor that, whether that is asking for debit orders and not just cash, um, you know, sort of token settlements, but you can track any of these behaviors that make a difference to your organization and ultimately add to your bottom line, whether it's reducing costs, or whether it's improving revenues. And that is the big thinking around speech analytics. It's got to be actionable and the insights that you generate have to be addressed. So, you know, if it's interesting, how many people mention the phrase red Ferrari? Well, that's interesting, but if you know that, so what? So it's always around the so what. So if you know this, what are you going to do with it? And that is in part why we are launching things like the success advisor, as well as the outcomes advisor, because both of those will get clients thinking around the end picture. And the end picture is this is merely a tool to help you improve your business processes and the business outcomes from those processes and being able to measure and track them. Excellent. Thanks for that, Corey. I'm going to ask Henriette to come in. Uh, we, we're up on about 45 minutes now. We no need to beleaguer the point. So I think uh, as we start wrapping up, Henriette, uh, over the last uh, year or so, you've been at the rock face. Uh, a number of your clients have requested features which have been developed very quickly by the brilliant guys sitting down in Stellenbosch. Um, in the last year or so, other than the success advisor and a couple of the other things like the uh, autom um, automated QA and the pre-built queries, what other features have you seen implemented into Corby? Because we have a number of people on the call today who are Corby users who may not be aware of some of the new features uh, in there. So as we head for a wrap up, uh, Henry, just the, the, the top four or five features that you are seeing implemented um, and used effectively by customers. Over to you, Henry. Sure. Rod, there's so many, it's it's actually difficult to just pick four or five. Um, we, because we we so much about the customer, um, anything, we are consistently 
looking and listening to hear what will make their lives easier. So over the past year, year and a half, and, and our clients can vouch for that, our customers, and even the ones who's on the on the call today on the video con. Um, big things that, that definitely, um, we consistently, and I keep what I call a wish list. So whenever a client has a request or they have got a suggestion or they say something that will make it easier, we once a week discuss and every morning we sit together if we need to, we then decide and prioritize. So some key things that I'm quickly going to share, like I said, it's difficult for me to just pick four or five or, or, or the big ones. Um, what it is all about is about making it easier. You've mentioned the scorecards. Definitely that was one of the big ones in the past year and a half. The fact that we need to be able to group on our scorecards where there was more than one call. The query library that we've mentioned, but also then just about making it easier. So when you write queries, what we've implemented is automatic negative query support. I will show you what we mean with that. Um, let's just open any one of these queries. You can now access, let me just get the results for you. Previously, what you had to do is write both a positive and a negative query. So it would have been to identify any call where the word or phrase is present, but then you had to do a separate query to identify any of the calls where it is not present. We've implemented automatic negative query support. So if you write your positive looking for presence of words, you now have from within the same query screen, the not matched, where you have access to your list of calls where the query was not matched. Similarly, in your dashboards, you can also now use that to build your dashboard cards for calls that does not match a specific query. We've also implemented the copy and paste of dashboards. Previously, you had to recreate and do the filters and think about what you need to do. You can now simply just copy and it will create a new layout copy. Or you can click in here and copy and it will copy over your new dashboard for you. Definitely then the queries, like I've mentioned, there's a lot of processing speed at the back that we continuously look at. We're currently looking at the categorization of queries where you will also then be able to say there's a group of categories that you can assign your queries to. So like I mentioned, we've got a roadmap and I know we had a question around the roadmap and Corey, if you maybe want to touch on it. Our roadmap continuously updates based on customer insights, based on what our customers are saying and what they need. So many of them, but those are some of the ones that we've implemented so far. Perfect stuff. So to answer the, the bigger question, yes, we have a defined roadmap for the next 18 months, um, but it is a priority-based roadmap based on the feedback we get from our clients. And as we deploy to more and more clients, we get amazing ideas. Henry showed the not match feature on the queries. That was a game changer for me because when you got hundreds of queries and you got to build the inverse one, you know, you got to build hundreds more because, you know, I've got to also say it wasn't said instead of just said. Um, and we are continuously getting these improvement ideas from our clients, whether it's to do groupings, whether it's to do the inverse um, around the, the queries. And there's a long list of it as we go on. The success advisor was part of that list because we kept seeing common things about which of my queries are current, which of my queries need work on. And we developed the success advisor to specifically address those needs. And that's probably one of the big benefits around, you know, being locally based is, we listen to our customers and we adapt and change our roadmaps based on what we get from you because ultimately the tool's got to serve you and create value for you. Um, and to ensure that value delivery, we've got to also ensure that we continuously listen and innovate in the process. Great, thanks. And uh, there was a question about um, Corsa language uh, within this Corby uh, speech pack. Can you address that, please? With pleasure. So, um, we are looking to develop more of the vernacular languages in South Africa, absolutely. Is Causa on the roadmap? Yes, it is. What we do need for Causa is a development partner, one of our clients that has a number of Causa calls that we can transcribe and teach our machine learning um, system how to transcribe Causa. Typically, we need between 100 and 500 hours of audio with the permission to use it. So yes, Causa is on the roadmap but we do not have a contact center at this stage with a significant proportion of Causa calls to be able to develop it. What we have focused on, and I touched on earlier over the last 12 months, is to significantly improve the accuracy rates of our 
current supported models, specifically um, Afrikaans, Zulu, and Sutu. Um, English has always been very strong. And now all of those language packs are on par. So there is obviously capacity and bandwidth to start developing additional languages. Just on the additional yeah. languages for any of the clients on here that are BPOs, um, Colby now supports not just the South African languages, but we support 21 international languages. You know, things like French and German and Dutch and you know, American English and UK English and Australian English. It's been part of our development roadmap is to be a fully functional you know, South African product, but also viable internationally. So for any of the contact centers that have, you know, American bases or UK bases, we now have language models to support all of those regions and 21 languages to be precise outside of the four South African ones. That is one of the most exciting things going forward in the next uh, few months where that those will become available. And as you mentioned, Corey, I think the BPOs, um, those that I've spoken to get very excited about it, the ability to use Corby, um, on two sides of the ocean, assessing it from the customer's point of view, perhaps in the UK or in the States, and then from the agent point of view. Um, I think that's a, a wrap. We don't have any more specific um, uh, questions coming through on the chat line or in the Q&A section. Call to action. Uh, um, hopefully, and looking at some of the names on our uh, list who guys who participated today, if you would like a one-on-one -on -one demo and commercial discussion about the licensing, et cetera, et cetera, uh, please respond to any one of our emails. Uh, Corey does the demos. He can do a comprehensive demo in about 45 minutes. So it's not a big chunk of time. And that would also cover the licensing and commercial models as well. So uh, as uh, Corey also mentioned, we have a very strong um, reseller network, both referral partner and reseller network. So if you have a tried and trusted vendor integrator uh, partner, we're more than happy to, to talk to uh, them and to partner with them. Uh, last words, Henriette, last words. <laughs> I always have many words. Yeah. For me, it's a, it's a no-brainer. Um, there's so many use cases and we're really here to help. It's all about making it easy, but helping you in that journey. So yes, nothing to lose. Give it a go. And for, for, for our current customers, and I see many of you, and, and thank you so much. And we are still always here to support and to help you. That's that. Excellent. Thanks for that, Henriette. And Corey, last words. Um, other than to what Henry has added to is, you know, speech analytics should be absolutely sort of table stakes for your contact center in terms of, you know, enhancing your service offering, improving your processes, um, and where you're recording conversations, you might as well listen to them as well through speech analytics because you've gone through the expense and effort to save those recordings for perpetuity but you know are you really listening to everything and are you really listening to what your customers are saying on every call the voice of the customer that's it and so to everybody who's uh, taken the time to log in and spend time with us today i truly hope that uh, you got good value out of this particular session uh, we look forward to engaging with you one-on-one -on -one going forward uh, we're on track as uh, corey said earlier by june july we should hit our hundredth customer in South Africa, which will be a, a phenomenal um, milestone for us.